Are you a pea shooter pod, or are you a walnut wally? One of the most fundamental questions of our universe. Which one do you prefer? Which one do you consider the best? It's a very real question, you know. They said World War 3 would be caused by the world splitting in half to decide once and for all. Is the ability to damage zombies more important than the ability to stall them out? Is Walnut's plant food better than pea shooter's plant food? Now, some treacherous heretics say that, in fact, both suck, but they have been since put down, obviously. Now, I did say that they only used to say World War 3 would be caused by this. You see, in part of their infinite wisdom, PopCap decided they needed a way to defuse tension, to save the world. So, they got the highest skilled gene scientist to muddle with both Pea Shooter and Walnut, and see what they could do to solve this problem. They combined the ironclad defenses of a Walnut with a monstrous firepower of Pea Shooter. The final outcome? An unholy creation. A walnut that could fire like a pea shooter. Outrage spread through the streets. Instead of World War 3 being triggered by some petty squabble, it was the entire world against peanuts. It went from a prize creation by PopCap to a mere 100 gems to buy. Blood was shed. Zombies were killed. Utterly horrifying. Thus, we come to Monday, where players can purchase this unearthly creature quite easily, as most gemiums aren't exactly hard to grab. But, as you can probably tell if you've ever used it, Peanut is among the worst plants in the game, probably. But why so? Well, let's start off by covering what Peanut actually is, then we can cover why he fails at his job so hard, shall we? Peanut is a premium plant turned gemium that was originally introduced as a counter against Jess's zombies, apparently. It's introduced in Dark Ages Part 2, and, to be blunt, I don't think it's countering kings at all. Anyways, it's based on a peanut, obviously. It's a joke based on it having P in the name, and a nut in the name. Because peas usually shoot peas in PvZ2, and nuts usually tank hits in PvZ2. It's a very clever plant combo, truly. I actually checked, by the way, and no, it doesn't seem like a plant equivalent to Peanut was ever planned to PvZ1. So, technically, this is a unique idea. Technically. Anyways, Peanut is pretty much exactly what you'd get if you added a pea shirt to a walnut. It costs 150 sun and has a similar, but not exact, fire rate as pea shooter. But gives the same amount of damage as a pea shooter per shot, with a HP value of a walnut exactly. The only unique stat is its 15 seconds recharge, which is 5 seconds less than a walnut's, and 10 seconds longer than a pea shooter's, obviously. More specifically, it has a base fire rate of 1.306 to 1.33 seconds, which is actually faster than pea shooter's fire rate of 1.35 to 1.5 seconds by about 7 to 10%. It's not super substantial due to, well, obvious reasons. This is PZ2, the max DPS you can get per second is about 192,000, because screw you P-Vine and Mega Gatling and Appeasement. Anyways, when taken to half HP, Peanut will lose half its body, which will half its DPS. This is the informational part of the video, so I'm not legally allowed to complain about this trait. We shall do so later. Peanut's plant food, like the rest of the plant, is a combination of both pea shooters and walnuts down to the exact number of peas fired. Shocking, I know. However, unlike Pea Shooter, it can be triggered by reinforcement, which is fairly unique and a somewhat strong advantage to an extent. I mean, you can just kill everything with reinforcement, so I don't think it's a big deal. Peanut, as a fairly similar plant, doesn't have a whole lot to say about it. That's a good thing, you see, as it means we can get right into complaining about it. Almost. See, see, I need to explain that roll compression really means with PZ2. You see, this will allow us to truly capture the essence of how nutty Peanut's skill at being bad is. That is a very normal sentence, you aren't allowed to criticize my script writing skills, I swear. A spork is a piece of cutlery well known for being intrinsically incredibly funny. It's a goddamn spork. Spoon plus fork, it's perfect. These obviously combine the elements of a fork and a spoon. You can stab and pick up food like a fork, and pick up smaller food and liquid like a spoon. It's a mass craft of modern invention, clearly, but does actually see practical use. 
You see, a spork is inherently worse at being both a spoon and a fork. It's hard to grab something when there are these huge round things on either side, and there is a huge hole for transferring the aforementioned food that needs it. However, it takes up less space in bringing both a fork and a spoon, and thus is often used by people travelling places who require both and have a limit on the amount of things they can carry. This is a good example of roll compression. It's a thing that performs the combined roles of other things, usually worse than them, but taking up less space or with some other benefit. In video games especially, this is a fairly common role for a unit. Think of the Bone Flingers from Kingdom Rush Vengeance, a normal attacking tower that can summon allies to stall out enemies, or for an example you may understand better, Blowover in PZ1. It combines itself as a counter to two other mechanics, Fog and Balloon Zombies. It is generally worse than both Plantain and Cactus, but does function very differently from both, so it's not necessarily super clear cut. In Plants vs Zombies 2, there are quite a few plants that do this in some way or another. Wintermelon deals both good damage and slows down the enemies, compounding Sap and Melon into one plant. But an example I think is particularly great is Toadstool, also known as Funny Frog, but mostly just that one premium plant that power crept Charmer for the first time. Joking aside, Toadstool is a combination of a melee attacker with a sun producer. In vanilla, it's a bit too cheap, so let's use Altherse's Toadstool in particular for this example. Toadstool costs 250 sun in Altherse, but can remove a zombie from the screen every 25 seconds. Unlike Chompa, though, it actually has increased range, so even without its ability to produce sun, it is actually unique. But it also produces sun when it eats, producing 25 sun when it does so, being essentially another sunflower in terms of sun production. These two traits don't interfere with each other, so they don't cause issues. Producing sun doesn't make it eat zombies worse, and, for the most part, the extra sun cost is already made up by the sun production, and it gives the plant more utility. It's not just a damage dealer, it helps keep up intense sun production late game. It's very viable for this reason, and it is a very interesting trait. This is important, as in this way Toastal can work as a raw compression. It compresses the role of a ramper, a plant whose main purpose is to help add more sun production outside of your basic sunflowers late game, and a more standard damage dealer that can instantly remove high HP threats. These two roles aren't mutually exclusive to each other, especially considering that Toadstool is melee, as both sunflowers and bong choys can be placed in mostly the same places. Now, you may have forgotten, but the plant we are talking about today is Peanuts, not Toadstool. I just wanted to bring up an example of a plant that actually works, before we get into the ones that don't. Why? Well, because this context is crucial for understanding how utterly flawed Peanut is on a conceptual level. Because you see, a range attacker and a wall don't have any form of synergy. The first thing I feel need to emphasize about Peanut is that it isn't able to be placed where it wants to be. Because it doesn't want to be anywhere. Here's the thing, a wall plant in general wants to be placed near the front. It wants to use its HP to stop the horde advancing behind it. Attackers, however, rarely want to be in the front. They want to use their range to allow them to do as much damage as possible before they risk taking some. Just because being a wall allows straight to be placed near the front, doesn't mean they really want to be. They need to gain something that way. Peanut, very clearly, does not do this, because it is designed to literally be a pea shooter and a walnut together. There is no additional mechanics intended to make these plants work well together. After all, it's a wall plant that wants to be placed in the back, and a shooter plant that wants to be placed in the front. And this is ignoring the entire health thing we talked about before, which sucks a lot. You know where I said that Peanut loses half its damage when it loses half its HP? While a debatedly neat idea, this does not work on a fundamental level. You are now directly punished for trying to use Peanut as a defensive plant, by losing out on 50% of its offensive value. If anything, you now don't want Peanut to be eaten. You only need it to lose 2000 HP, which is not at all a large amount of HP. You will lose that incredibly fast. So you now have a plant that is both a worse walnut and a worse pea shooter. It wants to be in the front, but it'll lose out on its damage dealing potential. It wants to be in the back, but then it's a waste of its HP, which composes a large amount of its costs. 
and just doesn't have recharge to be a standard attacker. That's a fairly big issue and, you know, makes it totally fail to compress slots. Oh yeah, roll compression. That's something Peanut also fails at. Its main job is to deal damage and wall off zombies, but its damage is super low. Peanut damage is really not good in PZ2 and is severely outclassed by most of the plants in the game. Its wall HP is also very expensive. Keep in mind, Tolnut has double the HP and costs less. Its recharge is admittedly a bit longer, but Primal Walnut. Point made. It doesn't really matter that it can technically take up two slots, because what slots are you using it for? Damaging plus wall? It can't hold off zombies for long, and you'll need a second wall plan to really stand late game, as Peanut just isn't capable of that. And its damage is still abysmal, and can't deal with even Kones reliably. Just use Red Stinger. Though that plan still sucks at a wall, it's going to do a lot more than Peanut could ever do, being a far more effective early game damage option. To make matters worse, there is straight up a wall plant that does somewhat show how this dynamic could and should work. Endurian. It deals damage to zombies eating it, which actually allows it to work quite well. Outside of vanilla, as his stats suck there, but you know, most plants suck in vanilla, it's fine. Except for the ones that don't. I guess. Then again, Peanut is already screwed for its stats, way harder than Endurian is. I said before that P damage was low, but you know what's even lower? The actual value of both plants that make up both sides. Walnut is already one of the weakest walls in the game, lacking the HP to do anything of actual worth, and as a wall lacking utility. P Shooter is an almost entirely worthless plant, costing too much to do too little. It's just genuinely nigh worthless, and Peanut simply doesn't have the stats to be good, even if he didn't fail on a fundamental level. So, how can we fix Peanut? Well, there are a few ways, a lot of them actually. Instead of just complaining about Peanut, let's talk about how we can improve Peanut and make it a functionally interesting plant. We can clearly fix him, and PopCap is clearly just bad and dumb and bad for making him this way, and we obviously know best. Let's start with the very basics. People have already tried to, and have succeeded at, fixing peanuts. It's a common modded plant, with a lot of people offering their own twists onto it. The main thing in between these is simple, though. Usually, Peanut is converted into a short-range attacker, usually done by turning it into a shotgun style attacker, firing shots that are generally super inaccurate. Think Alt vs Peanut, for instance, or at least a machine gun Peanut that I don't have footage of. This is generally a good way to fix Peanut for, probably, obvious reasons. It turns its ranged damage into something that wants to be placed near the front, and synergizes with the extra HP it has quite well. It also helps establish a niche for it, which allows it to have a role of its own, which it currently does not have. A more ranged melee-like attacker is pretty good, and is something that as of right now, only plants like Fume Shroom and Snapdragon really do. Though, these plants need support to tank hits. Peanut does not. These changes are less so about making Peanut good in its current state. That's just a stat buff, but try and make a combination of a Tacker plus Wall Plant actually work. This is generally done by adding a limitation of some sort onto the shooting part, but improving the actual power. This way, it isn't just a plant that ends up in a weird in-between, but one that can straight up excel in, supposedly, a new role. This can also be done in other ways, obviously, a limited range being one, only allowing Peanuts to attack in a shorter area ahead of it. This way, there is a reason for it to be placed near the front, which helps ensure that Peanut has a consistent place it wants to be, and can be balanced accordingly. Beyond this, the main thing that needs to be removed is the head splitting its DPS into half. That mechanic is straight up awful for a plant like this. Perhaps smarter would be making this cause a peanut to fire at a faster speed instead, turning it into a Kiwi Beast esque attacker, which would similarly work well with itself. While beneficial, it's unlikely to appear in mods until people find out exactly how peanut works. And even then, it's not great compared to just making him a shotgun, but hey, it's an option for sure. If you were to just directly buff peanut, though, it would be possible to make it good in some way, I suppose. Reflourish buff Peanut by making his recharge faster. 
I will let you be the judge of whether this is enough to make Peanut actually good, but I'd say other stat buffs could be a different place to start. A cost reduction to 100 sun is an option, maybe accompanied by a recharge increase to 20. Though, a damage buff and health buff could also work, perhaps to 1.25 times p to damage, and a health buff to 6,000 health? Hard to say this would make the plan at all good, too good, or actually balanced though. Mostly due to their needing to be in two places at one stuff. But I'm not here to test, but to theorize, apparently. Though I guess you could also just remove it outright. Or just not care about and keep it crap. I mean, it's not like Peanut is the crucial piece of the puzzle to make PZ2 a truly stunning star of a game. It's a goddamn Peanut. Like, probably the most beloved and unbeloved nut. Heck, just look at these guys. Truly, Peanuts are simply meant to be a little goofy, a little stupid, and you know, why not just keep Peanut in that group? Not every plant is meant to be used after all, and I don't know, maybe some guy will enjoy challenging themselves by using a Peanut. Hard to say. Roll compression is a fairly weird role in PZ2, because it's not really super important. Levels in PZ2 rarely last long enough for you to really be able to compress rolls properly and have it actually be valuable. To make matters worse, the player usually isn't so desperate for C slots to use a plant like this. There are exceptions, of course, but you're often not too desperate to bring an extra insta, especially at the cost of using a weaker plant instead. It's a reliability thing, as these plants are rarely reliable. How the peanut isn't exactly the only victim of this issue. Red Stinger is similarly bad. While it can technically be used as a wall, it's only in the worst three columns to put a wall in, and even then has a very limited 1.5k HP when used as one. 150 sun for a 1.5k wall isn't good. Shocker. And the placement restriction is entirely what kills the plant. Aside from being a wall, it's still a competent attacker being quite good for it, despite the failed elements of this design. It's just generally noticed at this point that most seed slot savers aren't going to be particularly good. And you may have noticed, all the fixes to Peanut just make it not a slot saver, but an attacker with higher HP that compresses rolls at a technicality. I think that says enough about the usefulness of roll compression in reality. The only way to make roll compression work is by specific battlefield rolls that aren't super important usually, as these allow the plan to have good stats otherwise. Think Toadstool, as I brought up before. One of the other examples that's come to mind though is modded Endurian too. Endurian is an amazing early game option, which holds up mid game quite well. It stalls out the early game quite well and applies chip damage throughout the rest of the game, which generally is actually pretty helpful. Otherwise, just honestly, Peanut is inherently pretty funny. Like, when I think of a plant I want to just laugh at, it's usually just going to be Peanut. I do also laugh at Pokra and Mega Gatling, I guess, but that's for a very different reason. Because of how absurdly powerful they are. Peanut is very different, as it's more so just incredibly awful, and that is, of course, the pinnacle of humor. Anyways, I should head off. I've been sick with a funny disease for the past while, so I do kinda need to take a rest to ensure I don't catch it again or something. Whatever. This has been Creeps, and have a good one. Thank you.